Welcome to this short screencast on the subject of um, turning a continuous variable into a categorical variable. Now, this is something that I briefly mentioned in uh, the second lecture where we may have some continuous data but um, we want to group it such that we can use it uh, as a categorical variable. So um, what we'll do is we'll start by downloading the uh, a, a data set from the QM Plus website. So this is the QM Plus website and if I scroll down to statistics data and you see under lecture 2 we've got these uh, sample of a population files. So let's open sample of a population n equals 100. So this is just 100 individuals sampled from a population. If I open that, it will open up in SPSS. Now, so what you'll see is uh, the statistics or data within this uh, file. So we've got some variables, height, weight, age, and gender. Let's work with the height data to start with. Now let's say we're interested in looking at the distribution of heights and we just want to visualise that information. And to do that with a continuous variable we need to group the data into bins, so um, into ranges. For example, the number of individuals with a height between 170 and 180 centimetres. SPSS makes this fairly straightforward for us. What we can do is we can go to the transform menu and then we look at the visual binning. Okay, visual binning. Okay, say we're interested in doing this to the height data, you can do it with the weight and age. Press continue. And you'll see a visual representation of the data. So SPSS has already given us um, a visual representation by doing some automatic binning on the data. Now, the first thing to remember to do is create a binned variable name. Okay, otherwise, it, it won't know where to put bins. So I normally go with the variable name and um, call it something to say like height bins just so that I know what it is. So that's just a variable to store our, our new bins. Now the, the key button here is to press make cut point and the cut points just defines how we're going to uh, bin, bin the data. So let's make cut points button. The other thing to look at is these, how SPSS is going to treat the upper endpoints. Yeah. So it's already got uh, upper endpoints included, but we could exclude them. So this is just a, a Within the bins, we might have a range, say, 130 to 140. Let's just uh, look at this. We might have um, a data for bins, let's say, um, 130 to 140. And so we're going to count all of the individuals who have a height between 130 centimetres and 140 centimetres. Now, what happens, so if, if someone has a height, let's say, of uh, 135 centimetres, they're clearly counted within that range. And if, equally, if, if they have a height of, say, 145, centimetres, well then they're clearly outside 
the range. But what about the case if someone's height is measured to the precision of our measuring instrument uh, at exactly 140 centimetres? Do we count them in that range? So is it in the range? Or not? And this is a good question. And the way that we get around this is we, we make a decision. And so we'll say that our bin ranges so let's um, so we have 130 centimeters to 140 centimeters, and let's create a second bin that is now 140 centimeters to 150 centimeters. So you can see if we had someone who's height is exactly equal to 140 centimetres, which bin do we put them in? Do they go into that one, or do they go into that one? And we can simply define where it goes. So let's say if we include them in the upper, upper end point, so we can say actually our range is 130 to 140 centimetres inclusive. All of that means is if they're exactly 100 centimetres, we'll include, include them. So we'll include 140 centimetres. Or we could have 130 to 140 centimetres exclusive, and then in which case we'll put the 140 centimetres into the next bin, in which case they go into the 140 to 150. So we have said that they're included, or this is in the upper end points are inclusive. And so if we now go to make cut points, so we're going to decide exactly how to slice up our data. Now if we look at the visual representation that SPSS has given us, here we see that the histogram goes down to 137 0.2 centimeters. So, well, that, we want to work with a more sensible values than that. So, let's say that the first cut point will be at 130 centimeters, and I want the width of my bins to be 10 centimeters. And SPSS now calculates the number of cut points automatically. And it gives us the last cut point location. And it says the last cut point location is 190 centimeters. Now, if you look at the data, you can see that it actually goes up to 197.25. So perhaps we want to create one extra bin to include data uh, up to there. So I'm going to make eight bins rather than the suggested seven. So now I have a first cut point location of 130 centimeters, so it's the lowest value. Then I'm going to have eight cut points, and I'm going to have a bin width of 10. And there you go. This is my last cut point location is at 200. And that's 
simply press apply and you'll see that here are the cut points and SPSS has drawn those visually so it says the lower point is 130 and we've also got one here at uh, 200 and here are the bins these are the bins it's going to create so it's going to re-bin the data and count how many um, individuals fit into each of these bins. And there's one more thing that we want to do on this page. Uh, we want to make labels for each of these uh, variables, for each of these values. So if you simply press the make labels button, now we know what each of these bins means. So the first bin is anything that is less than or equal to 130. Less than or equal to 130. And the second bin that it creates will be anything that fits in the range 131 to 140 centimeters. And then we have 141 to 150 centimeters, and so on. And so SPSS has now made labels for our data, so that when we plot charts, we can uh, this makes sense. And when we look at our data, it's human readable. Now, if we press OK, it tells us that bin in specification will create one variable. That's fine. Let's OK again. Go back to our data window, we can see that it's created this new variable called height bins and it shows us the ranges of each of those bins. So it's telling us here that this individual, so individual number one, who has a height of 179 centimeters, has been placed into the bin with with the label 171 to 180 centimetres. Well, that makes sense. They're 179 centimetres tall, we'd expect them to fit in that range. They do. And likewise here, this individual has a height of 191 centimetres, and indeed they are in this bin, 191 to 200 centimetres, and so on. But what we're really interested in being able to do now is use these bins to visualise the data as a histogram. Again, this is straightforward. We go to graphs, we go to the chart builder. Now we can select the bar chart, drag a simple bar chart, and now we want to create a chart of our height bins. So this new variable, not the original height variable, which is scale data, but now we have this um, ordinal categorical variable height in centimetres bin. Drag that onto the x-axis. SPSS already knows or assumes that we're just looking at count on the y-axis. So we've only had to take uh, the height in centimetres, the bin variable, onto the x-axis. And press OK. And the histogram is created and our labels sit along the x-axis. Thank you for watching.